Welcome to Thronecast, the official guide to Game of Thrones from Sky Atlantic HD. And we just watched episode two, Dark Wings, Dark Words. And what can I say? But wargs, stretching, cheese. Coming up, we talk to Isaac Hepstead Wright about his new superpower. Grace Dent is here to cheer on the women of Westeros. We have a tantalizing look ahead at what's in store for us in the next episode of Game of Thrones. And we examine the Brotherhood Without Banners. And there's me. King of the bearded, stinking barbarians. So lots to take in this week. We met the Brotherhood without banners. They seem nice, but what are they really after? Banners? And I don't know about you, but I think I may have a new favourite character, Marjorie's Nana. She's brilliant, she's just like a proper Nana. She likes a chat, she gives you cake, she sits out in the garden. I hope we see more of her. In fact, I hope she forms her own gang and calls it Nanas Without Banners. And good news this week, Theon's not dead. But where is he? Who are those people? My personal theory is that he's at a health farm and that was a very unconventional manicure and backstretch. And this week we learned about the wargs. Now these are people who can project themselves into the minds of nearby animals. Bran's one, that wildling is one, and I've been practicing this skill myself. No, that was, uh, that was just a nearby rat in a bin eating a pasty. Right, let's find out who comes top in our survey of best women in Game of Thrones of the week. And to tell us, here's pundit, savant, an actual woman, it's Grace <laughs> Dent, hello. Hello. <laughs> did, did you love the episode? I did love the episode. I thought it was one of those um, slower burning ones where everyone's kind of going somewhere and having a chat about it at the same time. So not tons of action, but a good time to, uh, to get to know a lot of people and new characters. I think Marjorie's Nana is the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I think she may be my new favourite character. I, she's just a breath of fresh air, isn't she? Because she, she comes straight in, basically slagging off all of her family. And you're kind of used to this wonderful deference that everyone has between, and they've kind of an awful lot of blowing smoke up each other's bums yeah, about yeah. how wonderful they are and how noble they are. So she just kind of comes in and calls everyone a fat oaf and kind of gets to the heart of the matter. There's something about her that, you know, she is very old. And there's this idea in Game of Thrones that if you are very old, you're either very, very hard and very, very mighty and very volatile, or you're very clever. And I think there's something, you know, she's very expedient in what she's doing. Mm. The way that she's brought Sansa in and got that info do we from trust, her. Do we trust her with Sansa? I think we trust her because Sansa is useful and she knows that. She's useful as a bride, mm. especially if you've got a gay son, you might want to get her married off. She's useful as a hostage, she's useful as an ally. So, and I think she sees that, whereas Joffrey kind of loses that and keeps wanting to get the crossbow out. Yeah, well, I mean, that was quite the scene, wasn't it? We've found another Joffrey fetish. <laughs> he likes to watch while a girl shoots taxidermy. Yeah, Joffrey doesn't get any better, does he? He and, doesn't. And but... there's this, it's kind of, his evil is multi multifaceted, is yeah. there? It's like just when you think you've got a handle on what his particular quirk is, there's another thing. And were you glad to see uh, Theon back again this week? Theon? Because I thought he was dead. Um, I was hoping he was dead. <laughs> still still can't quite forgive him for what happened yeah. um, with the rebellion. Uh, no, I was quite glad to see him back. Glad to see him being stretched, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Give it another turn. <laughs> That's it, you know, if it all goes wrong with this, I'm just going to get a job in that cellar stretching him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I quite enjoyed that, um, but I, I do think it, it, it's interesting when you go back and look at, say, the first series and you realise how much we actually loved him yeah and how loyal he was yeah you know when you go back and watch episodes when he's fighting alongside people yeah, yeah. and to see how lost he is is quite it, it's it's a lovely story because he is completely lost he's lost everything now Rob Stark and his, his wife, Talisa. Yes. Does anybody think that marriage is a good idea? I think it's a good idea. The viewer, I think it's a good idea. Oh, you old romantic. Because she is beautiful and she's intelligent and she has a lot of empathy and she is educated. She has a skill and, and, it, and it's a love marriage. So yes, they love each other and I think it's wonderful. But you know, this whole idea that he is, that Rob is already promised to this woman somewhere mm. in return for the crossing of a bridge. I think it was in season one, was it? Episode yeah. nine? I think that, you know. Bloody hell, Grace, you I are know, obsessed. I know, I watch far too much of it. Um, and I, it's this idea that he's promised and that, you know, his mother uh, 
Catelyn, as she knows that the, to, to go to renege on this deal is really bad. Something is coming. I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, you can hear you can hear people mumbling already, going, "This is his downfall. Yeah. That he's broken this promise." Well, Grace, I can tell you're plotting to sit in this Iron Throne. <laughs> it's <laughs> never crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave it there, Grace. Then thank you very much. Thank you. And if you, like Grace, want to binge on Game of Thrones, Series 1, Series 2 and everything so far from Series 3 are available now on demand. So we're beginning to learn a little bit more about what Bran's dreams are all about, thanks to the mysterious reads. Let's ask the boy himself what's going on. It's Isaac Hempstead Wright. Isaac, hello. Hello. Bran is back. I know. And he's kicking ass this oh, time. Oh, yeah. Hardcore. And finally, congratulations, after two series, you're away from Winterfell. Oh. At last. You're glad to see the back of that place. It was like Groundhog Day place. every day. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, as lovely as it is, as damp and dank and dark and windy and cold as it is, it's nice. So you don't nice. miss your pretend home? You're not homesick oh, for no, your I pretend do. home? I miss it. I miss it. But it's nice to have a change of scenery. Admittedly, we are usually just only in woods, though. So it's not much of a change. <laughs> but you've got some new people in your gang. It's not just yeah, uh, Osher and Hodor got, and Rickon anymore. We've got two new additions to the brand gang. The Reeds, can the you tell brands. me about them? The weird dreams he's been having uh, are part of this thing called warging, where you can where you can inhabit the mind of animals. Then this, the guy he saw in the dream suddenly appears in real life. And it turns out this guy is Jojen Reed and his sister's with him, Mira Reed. So you've got a superpower? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a very I interesting dream inside. about uh, Kate Moss the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so tell me about the actors. There's, there's Thomas Brodie Sangster. Now he's 23, but he looks about 15. Yeah, he's. It's really cool, but he's, he's so much fun. He's, he's, and he's a fantastic actor. He's got this, this sort of, in, insanely sort of beautiful voice, which sounds just really rich. Um, oh, he'll be coining it in other voiceovers <laughs> then, won't he? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and Ellie too. They're both, they're both really. They have, they're really sort of individual characters who are sort of very different to a lot of the other characters you see. And they just bring another sort of aspect to, to the brands. It brings some interesting new dynamics between each character. Now, we're not supposed to have favourites. Um, however, I do have a soft spot for Osha. The She's cool. Link. She is She's cool. cool. Uh, I think I, I share very pers similar personal hygiene habits with her. Oh, really? Yeah, I think we have a similar um, grooming routine. <laughs> um, uh, that explains the smell. <laughs> And we had Natalia in here a while ago, and uh, and she, she told me that she's planning to adopt you. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. yeah how's, that, how's that going? How's yeah, your own no, family feel about that? Uh, there are some complicated issues with uh, the adoption forms, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. We're gonna do it illegally. I'm just gonna run out of the house, and she'll pick me up. Right, in the right. Rally car, and then we'll, we'll you, drive off. And um, uh, uh, between series of Game of Thrones, are you, are you back at school? Are you being homeschooled? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I'm back. I've been doing. The past years it hasn't really been a problem because it's just sort of establishing ground work. But this year I've started my GCSE, so it's going to be a, a little more difficult. Uh, Are you me. doing GCSE drama? I'm not. Right, because you I'm don't not. need to. <laughs> you know it all already. Can you imagine being your drama teacher? <laughs> what, what have you been in? Oh, I, was, I was in Panto once. <laughs> well, I was in an HBO hit. <laughs> and uh, have you got any other jobs lined up? I'm doing an animation, which is really cool, called The Box Trolls, which is it's, uh, it's by Leica Studios, who made Coraline and Paranorman. And that's really, really cool. So it's got some really great other cast in it, like Simon Pegg and Sir Ben Kingsley. And I, it's a completely different experience to, to all of this, but it's, it's great fun. It's and that really must be cool. so easy. You don't have to worry about what you look like. You can just roll up yeah, five minutes before you're like to start. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Isaac. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. OK, let me get this right. The Fens hate the Hornfoots, the Hornfoots hate the Ice River clan, and, and everyone hates the cave people. But what about Elio and Linda from Westeros.org? What do we think of them? Hello. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Tell me about this Brotherhood Without Banners. Who are they? What are they after? Well, um, if you recall from the first season when the mountain that rises ravaging the Riverlands, Ned sent out a company of men to bring him to justice and uh, that's basically who the Brotherhood of Our Banners are. They were the men who were sent off, who survived all the fighting under the leadership of Lord Beric Dondarrion. And despite the fact that Robert is dead and Joffrey is king, despite the fact that Rob has crowned himself king of the North, uh, they continue to fight, but they're not fighting for the Lannisters and not fighting for the Starks. They're fighting for the common people, the people who are suffering during this war. 
and uh, bringing justice where, where justice is needed. And uh, we saw, saw the hound again. Where's he been? Because the last time we saw him, I think he kind of lost his confidence after the, the Battle of Blackwater. Where, where did he turn up from? One other thing that we've seen in the past seasons is that uh, his uh, beloved big brother, Sir Gregor, was at Heron Hall, so in the area. So um, it could be that the, the hound is perhaps out looking for his brother for you know, a nice little fireside chat or something like that. I get the distinct impression, Linda, that you know something that I don't and you're keeping it to yourself. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Elio, Linda, thank you so much. Oh, thank our pleasure. You. Our pleasure. And that's another Thronecast. Don't forget, you can keep up with our antics during the week on Facebook and Twitter. And the whole lot of seasons one and two are now available on demand, along with the episodes so far in season three. We'll be back next week, straight after episode three, Walk of Punishment. Coming up is a sneaky peek. Don't, don't go. Don't leave me. Please, please don't leave me. Don't, don't go. I want to buy them all. 8,000. My enemies think they've destroyed me. Make me another son. I could have that head on a spike by now. Ride east. Go. Orders were to take the King Slayer alive. Nobody said about you. Throw him off the wall. See if crows can fly. And have turned you all away if I wasn't a godly man. You're lucky we found you. These woods aren't safe for Ned Stark's daughter.